Bill, a lot of folks these days have no idea of how hard some aspects of life was back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, especially for people who lived in rural areas. Yeah. You had told Buster and I, uh, last time we were here, some experiences you had where accidents happened. Mm -hmm. And in one of the videos that uh, I've already published, you talked about how your oldest daughter was run over by a trailer yeah. and suffered serious injuries. And you had injuries at the time yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, now, back then, what was... Well, situations like how how were you able to deal with situations like what, well, was there medical just, insurance we, available that you could purchase? Or? Oh, we had little money. We had enough money to the doctors didn't try to get all you had in one trip. And uh, we uh, when we were in Colorado, we we still had five hundred mother cows when we went up there. And uh, we had three bad things happen there at the same time. And you have that down, I think. Yes. Now yeah, your things. boy got sick. But uh, we, uh, we did without. And uh, we didn't spend money. And uh, there was a man that put out bees up there and he had them all over where our cattle were, the hives, and he'd come by and bring us a gallon of honey every month. Wow. <laughs> and my wife made bread every day and we had meat and some vegetables. We didn't ever, I've never gone hungry in my life. And I'll say this, that the country people got along better in the 30s than the people in the cities. Because the only soup lines I ever heard of or saw were in the big cities and those people would line up. I saw them on the newsreels when we went to the picture show. And they'd be lined up three or four blocks in New York or Chicago and all going by and they were giving them a bowl of soup. Well, we didn't do that in the country. We all raised our own vegetables. We raised our own pork, we killed our own hogs, we made our, we cured our own meat. In the winter time, we'd kill your, a calf or a yearling and uh, we would have beef all winter. In the summertime, we mostly ate pork and chicken and my dad, had hens setting in the spring, and each old hen would hatch about 20 or 30 chickens. And then he had a barrel cut open and made a little house for them. And when the chickens were young, if it was cold weather still, well, he had a ditch under the house with a piece of tin and sand over it, and he'd put a lantern under the, that, and the little chickens would prosper through all that. And in the summertime, we would have fly, uh, fryers, and my job every day before, um, when we were at home, his mother, I'd go out and shoot a fryer for mother, and I got to where I could hit a chicken in the back of the head running down a cow trail with that 22. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, we would always have fried chicken, and mother made the best beans you ever ate. 
They raised peas, they raised butter beans. One fall, my dad made so many butter beans, and I think this was before I started school, because I was there with him, and we'd shell butter beans all day. He shelled so many butter beans that both of his thumbnails came off. Wow. And uh, we'd put them in jars, uh, we'd wash them and put them in fruit jars, and when Mother got in, well, she'd can them in the pressure cooker. And we'd can probably, I don't know how many jars a day. The, I think the cooker held about five or six quart jars. And we we had a cellar, and we'd put all of our canned food in the cellar and then it was available through the entire winter. But as far as going hungry, we never did that. In about 33, it was so dry here that our horses, work horses, nearly starved to death one winter. And, and Dad had always made feed, you know, and had everything for them to eat, and they didn't make any feed. And he, uh, I think the next year, he loaned his work horses to a man that had lost his up at Fargo. We had a place up there then. And uh, he drove his workhorses that fall up there, and this man raised feed. That's all he did. And they headed feed, and they had long stocks of different kind of feed, oh, uh, uh, long stacks that would be, wow, heck, three or four. Two or three hundred yards long, and of what, like beardless of, wheat, of a milo hedge, or uh, some of the other grains that they would head that feed by hand, and uh, he borrowed our horses to head the feed, and he guaranteed Dad that he would keep the. Horse, he'd feed the horses until spring came when Dad was ready to start farming again. And so when, when they got ready to go get the work horses, well, I was in school probably about second grade or something, I don't know. And uh, he and this man went in the car up too far with Larry and they got the horses and they had taken them up there with a wagon and team and they had a team of mares and uh, they'd hitch to the wagon and the man would drive the wagon and dad threw about probably 20 head of horses in behind the wagon and followed them with a car. It was dirt road from here to, to the Bovina, Texas, which is right by far. That's quite a few miles from here. And, uh, let's see, 60? It is about 100 miles to farther. That's and uh, we, uh, they, would, they br would bring them down to a little north of Tuvia in one day and there was a big lake there and they turned the horses loose, let them all graze and watered there and they spent the night. They just camped out. Was that spent been the Lake night. McKenzie? Huh? Oh, no, it was just a, a surface lake on the like road. Like a playa? Yeah. And uh, they were lots of them, you know, up there, nearly always something with water in it. And then the next day, they would get here with those horses. Well, I was getting out of school, so I know. I, got, I saw it. We were 
just out and I saw him coming over the hill over there by the close to the school with the horses. Boy, was I glad to see them coming <laughs> home and I I couldn't wait to get to the house. But, you know, people just did what they had to do at that time and so I never knew of anyone in this country that went hungry. Most city people. I, 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 it was, it was nearly all city people, and they, you know, they couldn't get jobs, and they were up there living, and, and, and uh, they were broke. Yeah. Everybody was broke, and uh, anyway, we got along great through those times, and uh, everyone knew how to work. Dad could hire young whole hands and they'd have to be grown men 20 years or older. They'd come to work at uh, 7 o'clock, they'd start to work. And they would work until 12, take an hour off at noon and work until about six in the evening, dollar a day. Had 10 men, cost you $10. And boy, they wanted the jobs. They weren't begrudging the price. They weren't doing anything. They wanted some money. And Were those men generally from well, this yeah, area? Or had and, they come oh, from yeah. uh, other oh, states? No, you? they didn't, you know, they, they were just they were right here around the area, young men that needed to make money. We had a young man that came and lived with us when Dad got a tractor and, and uh, he would drive the tractor in the daytime and I think I told you then Dad would drive it at night. He put two lanterns on a two before, hung it all on the front of the tractor, and he would plow with that tractor at night. And uh, they, they farmed about 500 acres. And they farmed it too. And they made two really good crops they had a good crop in 34, and just before he harvested it, he hailed it completely out. Then in 35, he made a, a real good crop, what we thought was real good at that time. And uh, it only brought about six or eight cents. It, wasn't, it didn't bring any money. You know, I'd be approximately uh, Thirty to forty dollars a bale for cotton, and uh, <clears throat> then the next year he made a really good crop. It was even better, and it brought a, my uh, prices had gone up, and it brought about eleven cents. Well, he got some money together. He hadn't spent any money. And uh, he bought some land, a farm at Fargo in 37. And uh, it was a section perfectly level. He had a house on it and everything. You know, that kind of brings to mind the fact that uh, people who grow up in urban areas and the more concentrated people are in those urban areas, the fewer resources they have yeah. available to them That's to right. be able to sustain That's right. themselves. If, if so they lose their job, they're in trouble immediately. They're depending on someone else to provide and, for and them. And there, there are living most of them, you know, they have built up some credit and different things, but they actually live, it, it, they don't accumulate anything much. Uh, well, it, it's hard to accumulate enough to retire on if 
you're figuring on retiring at 50, 60 or, or 65. And a lot of people have, and uh, but when times get a little tough, they won't have. Right. And uh, we are filling our cities still, and it uh, the more crowded you get, people, the more crime you have, the more everything you have trouble, and. Uh, the more room people have to be operate, the uh, friendlier they are, and uh, the the better uh, the they have better morals and everything. Yes, it's you had it. mentioned earlier that rural people, um, especially if they were having to go through hard times because of weather conditions, uh, one thing or another, that they the helped people generally each other. helped each other out. They did, right. and right. if someone got sick and went to the hospital, heck, I've seen these farmers dozens of times, if he was a farmer, they would all go and finish up his crop farm and fix it they might even harvest, have to harvest it for him, but they right. didn't. They didn't let him make a fake. Would that include sometimes uh, helping out some folks that maybe you didn't necessarily care for, but then on the other hand, you well, didn't want to see them. Just if totally they were fail in either. trouble, we liked them, and really, I can be honest with you. Until I was 40 years old, I never ran to much of anyone I didn't like. And including, I think they liked me. Okay. Including folks who uh, didn't went, have the same kind of religious beliefs or oh, political beliefs? Oh, that made no You were difference. tolerant to people who well, were different? That's their business. That's what you learn here, I think, is everybody is different. Nobody thinks exactly the same thing, and exactly the same thing doesn't work for everybody. 